Good morning and thank you. Um, I've tried to set up this first slide to really capture the, the essence of the program that I'm going to be talking about. Um, the first day that this project started back in 2005, we asked all the participants to go back home and uh, rummage through their shoe boxes to bring back old photos of sites in the community that were uh, important to them. And the photo on the left there is one of the photos that one of the participants brought back. And it was of her um, mother and aunt um, uh, and um, other family members out at a site called Tu and Chahali, which is uh, also known as uh, Big Springs. And that's a prominent um, site in both ecological and cultural terms. It's a source, one of the major sources of the um, creek that runs through this community, and uh, it has a lot of cultural significance, which had actually been uh, documented in a book um, that some people here may be familiar with called Wisdom Sits in Places by an anthropologist named Keith Basso, uh, and he did work in this community over 30 years ago and actually uh, partially funded by NSF, so uh, the work that, that we're doing here is, is kind of uh, mining some of that legacy by revisiting a lot of the sites that he visited with elders um, decades ago and seeing how they've changed. Um, and so the photo on the right is, is the same area, uh, the same spot, um, and the older woman uh, kind of leaning over uh, talking to her daughter uh, is one of the kids that was in that photo. And so the idea um, was to, you know, what if we'd had all the kids who were in that photo back in 57 uh, participating in observing how these sites were changing and talking about how science, uh, you know, plays into understanding those changes. And then when they grow up, and those folks are leaders and decision makers, such as, as Judy there, who's been uh, on the tribal council and president of the school board and a major community leader. Um, and so that's kind of the, the setup for uh, the work that we're doing. And our goals are, are necessarily broad, uh, but a big focus on building community capacity, and we're trying to weave together cultural knowledge uh, and uh, traditional knowledge and science to guide the restoration of culturally and ecologically important places. And the tribe has had uh, tremendous support um, throughout the communities and within the tribal council to restore their lands and waters. They have set aside um, millions of dollars from a land settlement case uh, for damages um, uh, uh, where the federal government uh, paid for damages that were done to the lands uh, decades ago, and they've set some of that money up as a permanent fund to support restoration. Some of the outcomes that we've had, um, I think the, the one I would highlight first for this group is, is greater community ownership of ecological information and the science process. Uh, so here's a couple shots of one of the sites that I'm actually um, featuring in, in the, the poster. Um, where students are collecting data, and they actually, you know, really have gotten engaged in, in the, uh, the process of discovery. The, the kids on the, the left there are using a metal detector to try to find rebars uh, of site markers that we put in uh, several years ago, and there was extensive erosion at the site. It had been uh, hit by a fire, so very difficult to find things, uh, burn trees falling on top of rebar. So uh, a little bit of an Easter egg hunt out there, and the, and the kids were enjoying that. And then the, the students on the right there are uh, resurveying one of the cross sections and um, seeing how the sites have changed. And um, I guess as another example, this site that I, I featured in is, is not necessarily one of the most important sites from a cultural or an ecological perspective. It's been pretty heavily degraded uh, as a result of fire and, and, and past use. Um, but the site has value as a place of learning. And um, the, the woman I mentioned, Judy, uh, she came out with, um, uh, to one of the classes to present on um, the, the project, and she talked about how it was important to go back here to see how this site had changed because it hadn't been treated. And so it, it kind of serves as a, uh, a quasi-control for some of the restoration treatments. Um, and then a lot of the work is providing uh, support for better monitoring and more restoration treatments on uh, community lands, and we're working with tribal programs to implement that. Some of the key uh, next steps. Um, trying to find ways to make the data management easier, more accessible, and to make the program more durable through collaborations with tribal programs and stronger linkages um, between high school, college, and post-college work. And the final slide, um, 
This is kind of giving a little bit of taste of, of some of the impacts. Um, the first year of the program, we had a lot of students um, uh, who are back home in the community, um, not working, single parents, or um, you know, have young kids. But uh, this group from 2009, all but one of the, the participants is still in school, which is a big deal. And at the bottom, I've put in some census figures. Um, you know, only 25% of the, the people in the community in 2000 were listed as having a high school degree and 7% with college degrees. So um, out of maybe 40 people that have college degrees, according to the census data, you know, we're on track to have a lot of the kids who've actually gone through this program who have college degrees. 